Sup guys, Alex from Nothing Box TV here, and I have a question for you. Did you miss me? Don't answer that. I know it's been a crazy anime arc for everybody this past year, and I had this big meaningful comeback speech, but I think it's just better if we just cut to the chase and I just fill you in on the games that I played while I was gone. No. 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 Huh. No. No. Have you ever wanted to be one of those alien symbiote weird things from those horror movies instead of just dying to it like a loser? Well, now you can. No! Stop! <laughs> Carry On is an incredible indie title where you end the lives of underpaid scientists who are all just a few days away from retirement. This Metroidvania is a short but sweet adventure with some of the most fun monster controls I have ever experienced. I ended up beating it in about four hours and I highly recommend it. Bravo to Vicarious Visions for blessing us with this flawless remake. Tony Stonks is an example that sometimes the classics are better than, you know. Because I was more of a skate kind of guy, as a kid I had really only played Tony Hawk's Underground, which I remembered loving. However, the first time I ever revisited Tony Hawk was with Pro Skater HD. For those who don't know, after the ambitious but fruitless attempts to reinvigorate Tony Hawk with Ride and Shred, Robomoto had decided it was time to retread its steps and simply play it safe by developing an HD remaster of the classic games. And somehow, I would have preferred a third game in the Ride series to whatever this is. The game felt like a Frankenstein's monster where it was slightly improved visually, but every other aspect was lacking. The game felt like a borderline insult to me at the time, and honestly it caused me to lose all interest in the franchise. I'm doing it for the vine. You're welcome. They uh, also made Pro Skater 5. <laughs> Two tickets to Morbius, Morbius, please. Thankfully, this wasn't where the story ended because Vicarious Visions was able to give us the perfect remake. In fact, this game was so well received, fans were hoping for DLC or a sequel remake for Pro Skater 3 and 4, but those hopes were quickly destroyed when it was announced that Vicarious Visions was going to be working on Call of Duty instead. Yeah. Oh, Chuck Testa. It's about time is right. And just like Tony Hawk, they're both owned by Activision, and they both got harassed. Crash 4 was a completely unexpected, fantastic sequel, and I think it's safe to say it took everyone by surprise. With Vicarious Visions' remake of their original three games back in 2017, fans were excited to see if they would follow through with the sequel, and it turned out that Toys for Bob would get their chance in 2020. Audiences were a little nervous given that while Spyro's remake trilogy was extremely well done, their only other noteworthy franchise was Skylanders which is for babies. But all those doubts were quickly put at ease that once the game was released, Crash 4 was a faithful and inventive sequel that actually improved on nearly everything. The game added unique playable characters that were actually fun to play as, and was also really difficult like a Dark Souls. Without a doubt, Crash 4 became an instant fan favorite. Now please just put Crash Nitro Field on PC, for the love of God that's the only one not on PC. And if you were hoping for more, too bad, because just like Tony Hawk, they're also working on Call of Duty. Isn't that exciting? We're not here to do flips. We're here to divorce! As a married man, this game really makes you feel like you're getting a divorce. <laughs> it Takes Two was a wonderful breath of fresh air in an industry that really only focuses on single player or online only multiplayer games these days. My wife and I actually started with a way out and fell in love with this dynamic split screen style of storytelling. Not only was It Takes Two a fun game in a general sense, it actually became one of the best multi-genre spanning games ever made, at least in my opinion. The game never had you doing the same thing more than once. You learned a mechanic, and the moment you get through that chapter, you really never saw it again. It's become one of my favorite games, and it absolutely deserves 2021's Game of the Year. And this game also gets the award for My Wife Will Actually Play It. The other two winning that award are Banjo-Tooie and that Hidden Gym, Witcher 3. Another series of games my wife and I played pre-divorce game was the new Tomb Raider trilogy. And while I can say all three games are solid, do not, for the love of God, do not play all three back to back because the Tomb Raider fatigue sets in quick. You gotta get up. You 
In fact, my wife actually probably enjoyed these games more than I did, because after we beat Tomb Raider, she was already wanting to start Rise of the Planet of the Tomb Raider. Overall, these games are pretty good adventure games with all the cliches of the genre. Just like Uncharted, both Drake and Croft killed a city's worth of people by the end, and the real treasure was the friends they made along the way. Our favorite of the three ended up being Shadow the Hedgehog of the Tomb Raider because we felt the game had a higher puzzle to massacre ratio than the other two. And obviously being the last entry, it also felt the most refined. And I will say that they're not my favorite trilogy ever made, but I can say that they are worth playing, and I'm looking forward to Unreal Engine 5 of the Tomb Raider. <laughs> Halo Reach first came out on PC with the Master Chief Collection like a year ago, right? 84 oh. years. John Halo's return to PC was monumental. First they put Master Chief in the soda, and then somehow after all these years, it was like Dad finally came home from getting cigarettes. But aside from playing most Halo games at friends' houses, this was my first time truly playing through these games, and I could say the hype was real. Playing through Halo Reach and Comet Evolved with my father-in-law on Legendary was some of the most fun I've ever had in years. And then Halo 2 on Legendary made me want to uninstall my life. There is absolutely no debate that the Halo franchise is incredible and the fact that I can finally now enjoy it on my PC makes it even better. And to be honest, this is one series that I'm actually terrified to cover in depth because of how important these games are to people. And I feel like I don't really have anything more to say that others have already said. But there are definitely things I could talk about with new Halo. Halo Infinite is like a 2001 Chevy Tahoe on an alien planet. It was probably pretty good 559 years ago, but in reality, it just shouldn't be there. Halo Infinite is not a bad game by any means. In fact, I enjoy the main campaign immensely from a gameplay standpoint. But what's the point of any of this anymore from a narrative standpoint? I felt like Halo 4 was heading in an interesting direction, but Halo 5 just killed all that momentum with Master Chief and Cortana's story, and it all became meaningless. There are tons of great video essays discussing what went wrong with 343's Halo trilogy, and while I did enjoy Infinite quite a lot more than 4 and 5, they are all just pale blue dots compared to Bungie's Halo. With how Halo Infinite's been handled post-launch, and with how the show has been complete hot garbage, I think it was just best that we kept the Master Chief in the soda. It's been 84 years. God of War and Horizon Zero Dawn are two Sony exclusives that made it over to PC that I didn't really play until they came to PC, and I'm extremely happy that they did. I have less to say about the actual games themselves because both games are excellent and they have already been spoken for for the most part. But I do have to thank and encourage Sony to continue porting more games over to PC because everybody wins when this happens. While it's true that I do find it extremely entertaining to see salty fanboys on any side of the console wars complain when an exclusive becomes available to more platforms, I think the age of the platform wars is coming to an end. And just play on whatever you like. So with all this talk about exclusives coming to PC, you might be wondering who I think is winning the console wars. The answer is nobody. They all suck because consoles you can't buy them, PCs you can't build them, Nintendo has Joy-Con drift, and PS3 has no games. Death Stranding and Elden Ring were the yin and yang for me this year, and both were oddly very emotional for me because of how turbulent my work and home life was. I played Death Stranding during a busy season where I would work 60 hours a week on average upwards of 75 hours a week, and as dumb as it sounds, it reminded me again of why I love video games so much. I had put off playing it because of all the criticism, and while I wish I had played it sooner, I couldn't have played it at a better time. Because of the intense job that I used to have, Death Stranding ended up being one of the most cathartic and relaxing games I had ever played in my life, and that is not a joke. And I want to say more about it, but all I can say is that if you are stressed out, that is when you should play it. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Elden Ring is also now one of my favorite games for being the polar opposite. I never played a game that I love to hate so much. For those who have not watched my Sekiro difficulty video, I had stated that despite how difficult it was, I adored that the challenge was there and that I felt the challenge was meaningful. However, after making that video, I had a games journalist moment and I finished the game with an easy mod. My excuse being was that I didn't want to watch the ending on YouTube, I wanted to experience it myself. But to my surprise after installing the easy mod, I had died less than 10 more times since the false corrupted monk boss fight. And what was even more mind blowing is that I didn't die a single time to Ishin the Glaxane. I was skilled enough to beat it without the mod, but I didn't realize I could until I saw the credits. And don't get me wrong, beat any single player game however you want. I'm not that kind of get good person. But I knew that when it came to Elden Ring, I wanted to do two things, not use an easy mod and see it to the end without uninstalling. And sure enough, I did. See it to the end, not uninstall. Also a little fun fact, after I beat Elden Ring, I actually went back, reinstalled Sekiro, and actually beat it fair and square this time. So be proud of me, you know?
So those were most of the games that I played while I was gone. Thank you guys for sticking around so much. I wasn't kidding that my job was really draining and that it was extremely hard to find time for anything that wasn't the wife or the job or anything like that. And now I can say that I previously mentioned that I have a new job now that I'm actually a video editor. So that thanks to you guys indirectly and, and directly, thank you so much because you guys indirectly helped me to get the job. And I'm just extremely grateful for that. And also everything in my life has just been so blessed and like I'm so thankful to God because there's so many things going on. I'm getting a little sappy because uh, in the span of when I wrote this and filming it, uh, I can't talk about it yet, but I have some extremely wonderful news for me and my family. They already know. I can't talk about it. I just wanted to give you that little Easter egg. I'm back for realsies, and I just thank you for sticking around if you made it here. Um, type in poggers if you, if you made it all the way. Um, just thank you again so much, and um, I'll see you guys next time. Stay hashtag blessed. Mm -hmm.